Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David and we're here in my shop where I build e war guitars. Well today we are starting a brand new series where I'm going to dive in and see if I can't tackle using a CNC to help me build my guitars. Now I'm a total newbie to CNC's. I, I've never used one prior to getting this one. In fact, I'm just learning how to use it now. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been very interesting so far. It's been a steep learning curve for me. I've had to learn how to use two new software uh, programs. One is Adobe Illustrator that I use for the initial design of the guitar. And then I'm also using Vetric VCarve, which is the software that came with the CNC machine, which allows me to create the G code to where I could cut out these parts. And uh, it's, been, it's been interesting. I've been fascinated by CNCs for years, and I'm finally going to take a crack at it. In fact, I've kind of hesitated uh, over the last year because I really wasn't looking forward to learning all this new stuff, although I love learning stuff. This was just, I knew it was kind of a steep hill to climb. And so far I'm really digging it. I'm really getting into this uh, CNC uh, uh, use and it's been really cool. Anyway, so I'm going to build a whole guitar in this series and we're going to build one that looks just like this. These are a couple of patterns I've been making. So as I'm creating G-code, uh, I'm trying it out, I'm cutting it, make sure everything fits right and everything uh, works out like it's supposed to. In fact, in this video, I'm going to make these two patterns right here and uh, see how it goes. So the first guitar I ever made was a Tele uh, about five years ago. That was the very first guitar I ever made. So I thought it was entirely appropriate for the first guitar I make on a CNC machine would be a Tele 2. Although this is just a Tele shape, I made a bunch of modifications and uh, so it'll be my version of a Tele. Anyway, I'm going to be using a, a, a series of both uh, all hand tools, power tools, and the CNC machine. And, uh, and if you've ever thought about getting into CNC work, you might want to watch a newbie go at it like this and, and kind of see what, uh, what's ahead of you if you're going to get into it too. Anyway, I hope you all stick around, check it out, and I hope you dig it. And if you do dig it, how about you give me a like and subscribe. Anyway, let's get rolling with the video. Okay. So just to catch up with where we're at, so so far we've uh, uh, drawn our initial design in Adobe Illustrator. We worked out everything like the neck pocket, the, the bridge location, the pickup pockets, the, um, the cavity routes, the neck, all that stuff. Everything was worked out in that. And, uh, and when I got that all done and I was happy with the, with the way everything looked, I saved the two major components, one being the neck and the other one being the body, into two different flat PDF drawings, in other words, 2D drawings. And I saved those two in separate files. And then I went to my Vectric VCarve, which is the software that you get with the, uh, with, uh, the CNC machine. And, and I pulled each of the drawings. So I pulled the neck in first, and I created tool paths for all the different things. You have to cut the profile around the outside. You have to drill the tuner holes. Um, I even did a little uh, VCarve thing to do my E-War to make sure I like the way the E-War logo looks on top. And, uh, and so I, I'll have that all set up, and I did the, um, the G-code files for that uh, in Vetric V-Carve, and then I pulled in the body and did the same thing. Now, the body's a little different because I had carving to do from both the top side, the front, and the back side, because from the back side, I have to cut the, the control cavity cover and the control cavity itself. So that was a little different. I had to, do, uh, I had to flip it and do, do two different sets of uh, G-code files for that. And that's all done, and I've got them saved in this little flash drive right here, which we're going to plug into the pendant on the CNC machine, and that's what we're going to use to cut out our parts. <clears throat> but before I go cutting any parts with any decent wood I've spent some time working on, um, I'm going to cut a couple of MDF, uh, basically patterns or templates, to make sure everything fits out, uh, fits well. And this, I've done this already several times uh, in practicing, learning how to use the machine. I've done this... Uh, Gosh, I don't know, I probably have four or five sets like this I've done. And these are just things I was messing around with just trying to learn. And uh, <clears throat> so what I want to do is I'm going to cut them out of the cheaper MDF, and I'm going to make sure that my neck fits in there good. I'm going to make sure my pickups line up the way I want to. I want to make sure there's no, nothing goofy going on with the code or anything that uh, would send it off. And, you know. and then I could see also physically see how well... Uh, the uh, cavity looks in the back and just how it all fits together. So, um, so because this is a brand new design, uh, completely from scratch for me, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut out these MDF patterns uh, this time too, 
But once I'm satisfied that everything works, I should never have to do that again. Uh, once I know the G-code is all uh, uh, correct and it's in there and it's cutting out properly, I shouldn't have to make any more templates and I could just reproduce this guitar uh, multiple times off of these same files. Um, so part of learning how to use the CNC machine is trying to determine just how do I want to hold my parts. And so I came up with this, I mean it's not my idea, other people do this too, but this is what I'm doing. I made these fixtures that'll, uh, on the back I've got pins, I've got these are 3 8 dowels, and I have corresponding holes uh, in, the, in the spoil board on the CNC machine for these dowels. And when I, drop my, uh, when I drop my fixture in there, into those dowel holes, it lines up perfectly on the center line. Uh, the the uh, fixture center line and the CNC center line lines up perfectly. Then I have a second set of dowels that sticks out of the top, and I'm going to drill my corresponding uh, fixture holes into the body blank itself. That way I could lay it down face up the first time, do all the face, uh, uh, carving I need to do, then I could just pop it, flip it over, and drop it right back on these same pins, and then be able to carve the back as well, and I should have perfect alignment from front to back. And so I have uh, this fixture for the bodies, and then I did this fixture for the necks. Now the necks are a little bit different in that my CNC uh, will only cut 25 inches long and 25 inches wide, and this particular neck is it's over 26 inches, it's 26 and a half or something. So what I did with this one, I did the same thing. I've got some dowel pins coming out of the back, okay, which will basically lock this down, this uh, um, fixture down on top of the spoil board. And then I have two dowels on the top. And what I did was I, you have to do a tiled tool path when you're doing something over uh, the length, the cutting length of the CNC machine. So that's what, that's what we're doing on this. So I have these two pins on my fixture, and I actually have four holes going down the edge of the, uh, the neck blank. And so what I should be able to do is drop it on the first set of holes, put it in there, cut out the tile one, tile one of the tool path, and when that's completed, I should be able to pick it up, just move it to the second set of holes in the, uh, in the neck blank, <clears throat> and cut out the, the, second, uh, the second set of uh, 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 tool paths uh, for the neck. Anyway, I think I do a terrible job explaining this stuff, but I just kind of wanted to give you a little uh, uh, insight before I get over there and start doing it, and then I'll try to explain better as I'm going to. So anyway, it's been a real cool journey so far. I mean, this has been a lot of, uh, a lot of thoughts had to go into this, and I'm really enjoying the heck out of it. So uh, anyway, so far the CNC thing, I give it two thumbs up. But anyway, let's, let's head on over the machine and uh, let's see if we can get some patterns cut out and see how we did. So the first thing I have to do is establish my center line on the body blank so I can properly align the body blank up with the uh, CNC spoil board. And I've got that piece MDF there I'm clamping in and that's basically going to be just there to help me align my body blank so when I do the, uh, the glue trick with the CA glue and the masking tape that I can quickly line it up accurately in the Y axis and uh, just be able to drop it up against that board and know that that body blank is held into place really well so when that glue grabs and it's going to grab quick that I know it will be dropped into the right place. So once my body blank's in place, I have to align the home to the center datum position. And to do that, I use my uh, 30 degree V bit, which is the pointiest bit I've got. And I think that'll get me the most accurate center point for the CNC starting point. And then I switch out to a quarter inch spiral upcut bit, which is gonna actually cut out the parts, the majority of the cuts on the, on the front of this guitar. And I'll set the height with that uh, plate. That's a little disc that helps you set the accurate height so the CNC machine knows exactly how far that bit is away from your, your uh, work piece you're working on. And I just proceed to drill those four holes. You 
it just amazes me the accuracy you can get with something like this. Uh, you draw it on a computer and you have that machine cut those four holes. It's just incredible that you could drop those on a set of pins that aren't going to move and then pick it up, flip it over and drop it back on and it lines it up absolutely perfectly every time. Very cool. So that's my fixture I just dropped into place. And that of course was uh, already done and it lines up very well. So that was accurately done too. So now I could just drop my body blank in there, tap it down, those oak dowels fit really tight in those holes I drilled. And now I could reset the Z axis height because now I've got two layers of wood there instead of just one. And the XY, which is the center XY going the uh, horizontally and vertically, and uh, that's already set from before. So I just reset the Z, and then I could pull up the code for this body profile cut, and it'll just start cutting it out. So once I got my neck pocket, the pickup pockets, and the profile cut on the outside, I'll change up and I'll put in a 1 8 inch down cut spiral bit. And I'm using that to cut out my control holes. Now I'll put that 30 degree V bit back in there. I'm gonna cut the center line on this. And of course I wouldn't do this in the actual body blank itself, but I'm doing that in order to, uh, to check the alignment with the neck once I get the neck uh, the neck template made too. So now I flip it over and watch how this just drops right on those pins. I mean, it's very cool. I think that would be impossible to do with a drill bit and a tape measure. I really do. So now I'm working on the back cavity. Of course, I'll cut the uh, route for the cavity cover, and then I'll cut a deeper route for the actual cavity itself. And of course, when I'm actually doing a body blank that's an uh, inch and three quarters thick, I'll have to go into my uh, G code and change the depths I'm cutting at, but that would be pretty easy to do. Now it's on to the neck. The neck is a little bit trickier because it's longer than my CNC uh, cutting path. So I've got to do the tiled tool path, which is very interesting, a little more complex. But what you basically do is you draw, you in the V-Carve uh, software, you actually have your neck drawn completely, but then you divide it up into tool paths and, uh, and that's, what I've, uh, that's what I've done with this. So I have two tool paths, T1 and T2. And I set up T1 so it cuts from the end of the board through the headstock to right at the spot where uh, it meets the nut or just, just short of the nut because I wanted the cut that goes down the actual neck itself to be all one tool path. I didn't want to take the chance of it having some kind of a misalignment there. Which incidentally, there was no misalignment whatsoever. Doing it with this method with that uh, fixture piece I have and the two set of dowel pins to relocate the neck blank, it just lined up without, without any inconsistency whatsoever. I think that is like super cool. So of course I re-aligned uh, the XY position using my 30 degree V bit and since that bit was already in the machine, I went ahead and did those cuts first, which I did my little uh, E-War logo, I did the center line, I cut the nut, and also came back and I cut the little, uh, I designed a little design to go at the 12th fret, and I had to go ahead and cut that too. And 
it's been a really steep learning curve for me learning all this software and everything and designing uh, in Adobe Illustrator, which I had no experience prior to this. But it's really becoming a cool thing. Um, I'm finally figuring out my way around both those programs. Not very well, I'm not very good at it yet, but I can really see where uh, using these tools, using that design software and the CNC, I believe it's going to open up a world of creativity to me. I really do. So right now it's cutting the sides of the uh, the sides of the neck itself and the bottom, which was T2, and you can see here I'm going to pop it off of that pair of holes, get the dust out of there so it goes back tight again, and I'll reset it on the second set of holes, and then I'll cut out T1, which will be the the profile of the headstock. Oh, and it's drilling the tuner holes too. Okay, so overall I think that went pretty good. Um, so there's the neck cut out. I got my center line here. That's the my nut. There's my tuners. I even did the little E-War logo up top to see how it fits. And, and I can see already, I need to move that. That's a little bit too close to the edge here. And, uh, and I could check my tuner holes and all that. With I'll, I'll try a tuner in there and see if it's gonna work. And, and I think that looks pretty cool. And I've got the, the body also. Um, I tried the, I thought I had the right size for these uh, P90 covers. It's just, it's, it fits, but it's, it's a little bit too snug. Um, it doesn't need to fit that tight. And I also got to change the radius on the corners. I must have gotten off with the radius in those. So it's been handy so far to do this. Um, I could see that, you know, I think here's my uh, three-way switch going to go here. I think that's a good proximity to the pickup. And I got good spacing on there. I can see how my, uh, my uh, cavity uh, lines up back here. I think that all looks pretty good. So the next thing I wanna do is I've gotta cut, see these guys here, these are tabs. Um, these are what holds the uh, work piece into its, uh, the waste piece here. So I'm gonna take my little saw and I'm gonna saw those guys off and probably hit them on the sander. And then I wanna try that neck in the neck pocket and see A, does it fit and B, do we have a straight line going right down the middle between our two, uh, our two center lines here? So I'm going to get my saw and cut these out, and, uh, and then we're going to see. There's a couple little glitchy things went on with the CNC machine. It's probably uh, due to operator error more than anything, I think. It's kind of a, I guess it's a complex tool, and I'm still learning how to use it. I think that's pretty cool. I think this whole thing took about, uh, I mean, it probably, I, it's probably been three hours. I think if I was a little more confident with what I was doing, I could have done it quicker. But still, cutting both of these out, all this stuff on here in three hours is not bad to me. Yep, one more. There we go. There's the waste off of that thing. All right, I'm gonna run these over to the sander real quick and uh, hit these nubs down just to get them out of there. And I'll be right back. Okay, I just got one little thing to clean up here on the neck pocket. Something I could see I need to, I'll need to change. It turned before it cut all the way up here. I don't think that's even be a big deal if I did the the actual body that way, but um, it is something I think I could probably adjust. Okay, so let's see. You're going to see it with me for the first time here.
Man. Holy moly. That's a nice fit right there. Look at that. Nice fit. Looks like my center lines are in line right here. Looks like they're lined right up. Let me put a straight edge on there and see what that looks like. I mean, that is right on. I'm going to turn that camera down. So that ruler, that is straight as could be. I love it. I think that's going to work good. And that fits really nice and snug too. And you can see how I did the back of the body here. I'm going to curve it like that. So with, this is going to be my version of the Tele. With P90s. Because I happen to like P90 pickups. But uh, anyway, okay. And that's the headstock I'm going to use there too. Uh, I'm pretty pleased. I'm pretty pleased with that. Well, let's see what goes from here. All right, so that's it. We are off and running. I got a tiny little bit of tweaking to do on the design. I got to uh, adjust the pickup sizes a little bit. I'm going to make the headstock a little bit longer and move the uh, move my logo up a little bit further from the uh, from the tuner holes. But we are up and running. Anyway, I hope you all dug it. Hope somebody got something out of it. This has been real fun. I'm really looking forward to doing this. Um, anyway, if you all dug it, how about you all come on back next, next week and check out my next video. In the meantime, God bless you. You all have a wonderful week, and we'll see you all in the next one.